Okay, it is two o'clock. We will go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining us um, for our weekly media update. We took about two weeks off, but we are back. Um, I'm Lauren Landworlin. I'm our Executive Director of Corporate Communications. I'm filling in today for our CEO, Dr. Cliff Robertson. And today I'm joined by Warren Clinic pediatrician, Dr. Olina Baumgartner, and a face that may be familiar to some of you, David Donald, our Director of Pharmacy. So today, if Savon can pull up that screen, um, I'm gonna start with a quick overview of our current COVID statistics. So on here, you can see that we continue to see a decline in our COVID inpatients. These numbers look to be about the same as they were right before the last surge. Um, the good news is, is that they're still on a downward trend versus the upward trend that we saw before the last surge. Um, let's click to the next slide. And then you can see our yearly comparison. The red is 2021. Um, there's a um, nice trend line heading down. So hopefully we continue that through the holiday season. And then next slide. And here is the information that you can see on our online COVID dashboard at stfrancis.com forward slash COVID-19. Today we have 76 um, inpatients with 39 of those being in isolation. And our average age of patient is 56. Of our 76 inpatients, we have 19 on a ventilator. And our average age for those patients is 52. Um, again, all of these numbers are updated um, daily on our website, and if you have any questions um, about those stats, we can take those at the end. Um, but now I will turn it over to Dr. Baumgartner, who is going to be talking about um, pediatric patients and the COVID-19 vaccine, which has been getting a lot of news, but we are happy to have a local pediatrician talking about how that looks um, for our community. Armina? Um, hi, I'm Dr. Rowena Baumgartner. I'm a Warren Clinic uh, pediatrician, like Lauren said. Um, today, I just want to go over a few stats about COVID in the pediatric population, um, and then um, a little bit about the vaccine, and then we can open up for questions for anybody, okay? Um, so we have, um, at St. Francis, um, at our Children's Hospital, we've had about 312 children age 17 and under hospitalized for COVID-19. Um, and that started uh, tracking back in about uh, March of 2020. Um, and for the past several weeks, we've had about seven kids in the hospital at a time. Um, and that number stayed pretty steady. It may go up or down by one or two, but that's been pretty steady. Um, and of course that doesn't count um, uh, the children who have been seen in offices or urgent care locations and tested positive and are stable and, and convalescing at home. Um, and so, you know, as most of you probably know, when COVID first started, um, we didn't really know how children would react to it, how would they, what symptoms they would have. And so as it has evolved, um, we've seen obviously a lot more children um, with COVID-19 um, and the symptoms tend to look like any other virus, which tends to make it a little bit complicated. Um, they can have cough, runny nose, headache, fatigue, fever, body ache, sore throat, vomiting, diarrhea, and sometimes can have some red eyes and some other um, indiscriminate rashes. Um, but again, it looks like any other virus. So that can make it a little challenging for um, physicians to try to weed out um, you know, just the common cold um, with um, the more severe COVID-19, of course. Um, thankfully, most of our kids do well. As you can tell by our numbers in the hospital, they're not as high as ad adult uh, numbers. But we do um, have some children who are immunocompromised or have underlying conditions that do get severe enough COVID that need to be hospitalized. Um, and also, a lot of people um, are familiar with, you know, kind of long-standing long-haul COVID. Um, we tend to not see that much as, as much in the pediatric populations, although we tend to see more severe um, symptoms or um, lingering symptoms in our teenagers and young adults, as well as the very small children or babies um, that can tend to have a higher fever um, or a prolonged fever. Um, but again, it's kind of it's kind of random, and so. Um, we don't really know how any specific, specific child will react to COVID, and so um, it just depends on the patient. Um, the, um, you probably heard a little bit in the media about um, MISC, um, which is, um, you know, a more severe kind of 
manifestation of COVID. Um, we tend to see it um, after the patient has had COVID. It doesn't tend to show up right away, but it may be delayed even by a few weeks. Um, and a lot of times it will show up and uh, the patient may not have even known that it had COVID. Um, but when we test them or check antibodies, they're positive. Um, and the symptoms of that tend to be um, more severe than COVID or COVID-like symptoms that are more severe. Fever, stomach ache, red eyes, diarrhea, dizziness, um, rashes, vomiting. Um, again, these are some of the same things we see with COVID. Uh, swelling of lips and tongue and hands and feet. We can see that as well. Um, and the main thing is it, it's an, uh, a condition. Okay. With, uh, oh. Got it, sorry. Exaggerated inflammation. Okay, and exaggerated inflammation of, of the organ systems. Um, so we, we can see that, and that is um, a more severe uh, manifestation of it. And some a lot of times these kids need to be hospitalized or at the beginning of that type of illness are hospitalized for their symptoms. Um, and the treatment is mainly um, supportive, um, IV fluids, oxygen if they need that, steroids and antibiotics in some um, capacity, and sometimes IVIG, which is a special um, antibody IV uh, medication that we give for some of uh, those cases. So the biggest uh, thing in the media, obviously, is the um, CDC and FDA um, approval of the COVID-19 vaccine for our kids age 5 to 11. Um, and the good news is that um, the data looks uh, really promising. Um, it looks very efficacious, so, you know, very uh, worthwhile to help stop COVID and um, also to help with hospitalization and severe illness. Um, some other interesting things about the study have shown that they did not have any cases of myocarditis, which I know um, in some of the older uh, late teens, uh, early adults had had some of that. And also there have been no um, cases of anaphylaxis that I am aware of in those studies, which is really great news. Um, and a lot of people ask, you know, why, why should I, you know, a lot of people on the fence, should I get their child vaccinated? Why should I get my child vaccinated? Um, and those are great questions. Um, we, of course, always want our parents to advocate for their children and to make sure they feel comfortable with um, anything that they are going to be treating their children with. Um, but the good news is that most of the kids do great with vaccination. Um, they also actually tend to have less symptoms after that second dose, um, which you can sometimes have fever, aches, headache, um, chills, and they tend to have a lot less of that as well. Um, and the kind of the reason that we've been talking about why is it important for this age group to be vaccinated, um, and there's a couple of them. There are people in that age group who are do have underlying illnesses like asthma, congenital heart disease, or kidney disease that really need to be protected from getting COVID at all because they might have severe illness. Um, and then there's also, um, you know, just the added benefit of protecting them from getting COVID and spreading it to other uh, populations who may not be vaccinated, um, other immunocompromised adults or young adults or older adults who have chosen not to get vaccinated. Um, so I think there's some, um, a lot of good um, data to show that it's helpful for kids and also for um, the community and for their families. Um, so that's kind of my overview of, of, of COVID and kids and, um, you know, how we're doing with that. We are, um, at, here at St. Francis, we just received doses of vaccine today. Um, we are working on the logistics of getting that out to the populations here in the community because we're excited to do that and um, want to get that out as soon as possible. Um, we are um, going to be doing it at on campus at St. Francis. And um, if uh, Savan's going to share a screen here, um, if you go to the St. Francis website and you click on the COVID-19 banner at the top, um, you can actually schedule children age five to 11 now. She'll go through that for us and show you where to do that. Um, the vaccines will be given at our COVID uh, vaccine clinic here in the Springer building across from St. Francis, Maine. Um, and they can make an appointment. Um, also our health departments, especially in our outlying areas, our health departments will also most likely be doing that. So I'd ask the outlying um, areas, check with their health department and see when and where they're gonna be offering those. Um, but we're excited to offer this as a service to our community, um, to those people who would like to get the vaccine for their children.
Thank okay. you, Arlena. And we can So we have um, David Donald online, should any questions come up specific to the vaccine itself. So at this point, we will open it up for questions um, from the group. I do have some questions about the vaccine. Um, I know the new doses come with the yellow top as opposed to apparently they have been coming with a purple top on them. I thought that this was the same fluid, just a lower dose for kids. Um, can you tell me why we need the special yellow topper fluid if this is just the same thing adults have been given on a smaller basis? Thank you. Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so, you know, it's a different concentration. So even though it's the, you know, the same vaccine that's been studied and been given to adults, uh, you know, to measure it accurately, they have to make it in a different concentration so we can pull up an accurate dose. Uh, so as a result, they want to make sure they formulate it in the most safe to use, uh, you know, formulation so that whenever we store it, uh, we don't have confusion when we're pulling it up. Because you can imagine, and, you know, a lot of the sites that are giving them to a variety of different age groups, uh, that's a risk that you have to make sure that you've got a good plan for so that you can give different doses to different patient populations. Uh, so actually, the DILU one's a little bit different as well. Uh, the DILU one's just what we put in the vaccine to, to bring it to the right concentration. Uh, so, like I said, the vaccine is the exact same, but the preparation is going to be a little bit different. The concentration will be a little bit different uh, to make sure we get an accurate dose for those 5 to 11 year olds. That's a really do good you, question. Do you, you know anything about the changes in the shipping and why Oklahoma health givers are going to have to wait? I know this is happening across the country. Can Do you have any insight as to what the delay has been? Because I know Tulsa Health is receiving their doses today. Um, I, I know it's supposed to trickle in. But um, do you have any insight to that? That'll be my last question. Thank you. No, I, I don't. Uh, you know, we put an order in uh, actually about, gosh, it was about three weeks ago now. I got confirmation that it was received, um, but didn't get any notification on shipment in, until recently. But I haven't heard anything about uh, what, what caused the delay. If, if, sorry, I've got one more follow up on this. Um, so I have seen some local pharmacies hand, already giving out the, the vaccine to children. Are they giving them the adult dosage and just changing what's in the, the, the syringe? Or did somebody get some doses ahead of time, do you know? Now, I know that there was some small shipments received by Oklahoma last week. Uh, like the Tulsa Health Department uh, was able to pull in 50 doses uh, for St. Francis. It's just not the large shipments that we ordered. Uh, so, I mean, again, I can't speak for every pharmacy out there, but, but I would imagine that anybody that's giving pediatric vaccine is, is using the, the proper product. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I've, I've got one. I'm, and I think I know the answer to this, but I just want to make sure that parents know that the dosage is based on age, not body size, not weight. So a parent who says, well, my 11 year old is, you know, 180 pounds, doesn't matter. They're still going to get the pediatric dose. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I mean, that I've, I've heard people talking about that, and David can also comment as well. Um, you know, if you have a very large 11 year old, that would be up, that could be up to the physician to make that choice. But in typically, um, it is by age. Um, David, can you allude to anything else that you've heard? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, that's not uncommon for meds. Most medications that we dose are, are weight based. Uh, but some of them are age-based, and, and uh, really it just goes back to that's how they studied it. So, you know, what we can say is, is that, you know, in the, in the patient population that they studied that was 5 to 11, uh, that dose was enough to elicit an immune response, immune response and also, um, you know, low enough to, to minimize side effects. And so, uh, you know, I mean, I think in, in most pediatricians' opinion, most pharmacists' opinion, you're going to have a group of patients that, whether they be 11 to 12 would, would be fine with either one of them, but that's just not what was studied. So we're going to stick with, with, the, with what the recommendations were and, and follow those. But I mean, it, it's a good point. I've had a lot of people that have said, hey, I've got a 12 year old that's actually large, or that's actually smaller than my 10 or 11 year old. And, and this seems a little funny. And uh, again, it, it, you can see other medications that are, are dosed in a similar fashion that are age based. And we'd always encourage parents to consult with their family's pediatrician um, if they have questions specific to their child. You know, another, um, you know, complicating one that's come up that we've received some questions on that's kind of up the same, that's in the, the same path is, you know, what if, 
your child's age changes in the middle of this. And so the American Academy of Pediatrics actually uh, recently came out and said, if your child gets to lower dose and then they have their 12th birthday before they get their second dose, they'd actually recommend getting the second dose of a lower dose as well. Uh, so again, something you can chat with your pediatrician about, um, but you know that's what the recommendation is is for now. Thank you. And just to clarify, at this time, the only one that is approved for this this age group five to eleven is the Pfizer BioNTech. And my understanding is the dosing regime, while that's a smaller dose, the actual application is the same. You you get the shot and then you wait. What is it? Four or five weeks, and then you get the second. 21 days. Yes, yeah, so that's correct. So the, the dose is 10 mics, and then you repeat that in 21 days for, for 5 to 11-year-olds. It's 30 mics for 12 and above. All right. I think that's all I've got, guys. Great question. Thank you. Anyone hey. else? Hi, it's Elizabeth from uh, Public Radio Tulsa. I was wondering, uh, I've been seen on social media, but haven't looked into it that COVID, <laughs> sorry, it's my dog, is a, is a leading cause of death in children now. Is that right? Do you have any information on that? Um, I, I can't allude to that specific um, statistic, but I have, you know, the one of the recent um, statistics I heard last year, last, sorry, last week was, that about 25 per cases, 25% uh, of cases um, nationwide are, are pediatrics. And that is mainly because they're the unvaccinated um, population and, and a lot of uh, adults and young adults have been um, vaccinated. So um, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I have heard some of those statistics and that sounds probable, but I can't quote you 100% on that. David, have you heard anything specific? Well, uh, what I've seen for 5 to 11-year-olds, so keep in mind this is 5 to 11-year-olds since this is the age group we're talking about for this vaccine, uh, and, and this is maybe a little dated now, but it, it was the eighth leading cause of death, not the first leading cause of death, but, you know, still that's concerning if it's, if it's up there at all. Um, you know, also in this age group, they, they, looking at the CDC data, they looked at our state and the surrounding states, so I think it was about a five or six state region. Uh, in this age group specifically accounted for 11% of the, the COVID hospitalizations uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, so again, you know, even though we, we tend to not think of, of pediatric patients to have the same uh, outcomes as adult patients when it comes to COVID, they are still, you know, affected by this disease or by this, uh, this virus and, and, and can obviously have negative outcomes. So that's why it's so important to consider vaccination for your kid. And, and doctor, just, I think with the the Delta variant, we saw more kids get sick and those patients got sicker than with the wild variant, um, the the original one. Is that your experience as well? Um, I, you know, I don't, there's, I don't know that there's any hard data on that, but I would say just anecdotally, I would say, yes, that's true. I also think that um, we saw an increase in um, COVID in the last, you know, nine to 10 months because of, you know, we, we stopped, mass mandate stopped, um, we started gathering again, um, and those, um, this age group continued to not be vaccinated. So um, I, I do think that the Delta variant is, you know, from all accounts, more contagious. So that probably is contributing to our increase as well. Thank you. Anyone else? If anyone's having technical issues, you could also put your question in the chat if that's easier. I've got one more if I can. Are you expecting to run out of appointments because you're waiting on these shipments for children? Or are, are you also going to, because you know more doses might come in next week, already just scheduling things out week in, weeks in advance? Because obviously on one hand, you've got some parents who are like, absolutely not, but you have other parents who are like, please give it to me now and then put me in a time machine and speed up for three weeks so I can get dose number two. David, I'll let you feel that one. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. You know, we, we've got uh, a, a thousand doses from the Tulsa Health Department uh, today, so we'll be waiting for our shipment. Hopefully we can get some confirmation of, of when our shipment will come in and, and could be this week. Uh, I've heard mixed messages for what the community has out there, and, you know, one big difference from when we hit the first round of COVID vaccines is, is that there was very few spots that we're giving them, uh, you know, ourselves being one of them, but now with, with, you know, help from a lot of the community pharmacies out there, 
uh, there's a much bigger footprint when it comes to being able to get vaccinated. And and uh, so as long as, you know, we've got a little, sorry, I was getting a little feedback. Uh, you know, as long as we, uh, you know, have some other facilities out there that are that are giving vaccine as well, you know, I think we should be able to get this out to the community a lot quicker. Uh, but hopefully within, you know, by the end of this week, we'll all have a, a good supply and then we'll continue to get that weekly. And the other thing I'd add to that is even for our adult um, first, second um, dose and booster shots, we only open appointments for a week out. Um, so that allows us to um, add appointments as needed and make sure that we are only offering appointments for what we have um, supply for. Thank you, Bob. there aren't any other questions, we will wrap it up for this week. And of course, you can always follow up with myself or Savon if you have any follow-up questions.